Hi, I'm Anastasia Higginbotham. I'm the author of What You Don't Know, A Story of Liberated Childhood. It's published by Daughter Press, and it just came out a couple of months ago. Um, it's the story of a child who knows that he is queer from a very young age. He's just knows. Um, he doesn't have to come out because he never was in. He's raised in a home with a, um, well, two different homes because his parents are not together. His mother is white. His father is black. Um, they, so this child is experiencing um, many identities, overlapping identities, intersecting identities of queerness, whiteness, blackness, and then being a child, which means often in many circles, not being taken seriously, not being listened to. Um, but the way this child has been raised is to, um, is to know that their voice matters, that their life matters, that their experiences and wisdom are valid. Um, so I, I, I wanted to tell a story about a liberated childhood, which to me meant a childhood where the adults in the child's life, the adults who have influence over how the child experiences school and um, ideas about God and um, just their own divinity and their own right to exist and to emerge exactly as they are um, is unquestioned, at, at least within their close circles. This is a child who has been raised to know who's on their side, who's watching out for me, who can even see me, who can even see the uh, multitudes within me, all of the identities within me, all of the um, contributions that I am ready to bring to any room, not, not as a performance, just as being. Um, and so uh, I want to read to you a little bit of the story and then tell you, just show you a little bit behind the scenes of how I made it. And um, I'm going to share my screen for a moment. show you. This is the book. This is the interior of the book. And uh, that's Billy Porter. So I'm going to zip through some of the parts and then read some of the parts. Um, we have a child who before kindergarten dances and plays and paints their face and, and invents stories and feels free in the world. And then they go to school and they get called terrible names. Um, and it's just like, ah, what is happening here at school? And they get yelled at for acting like a girl, whatever that means. And um, they get, uh, they're experiencing the racism of like always being in trouble like them and the other black and brown kids in, in the class are always in trouble. And like the white kids are always on the green, which means you're not in trouble. You have to go ahead. And um, they're just like, ah, oh, school. But at school, they find people who really watch out for them. And um, they introduce us to Moxie, their best friend, who's queer, like they are. And um, Addie, the radical librarian, and Ms. O, the teacher who loves me, and Mr. Vasquez, the counselor, who's also queer. And um, they notice that these people who, who look out for them at school always make them aware of safe spaces. right? And that little rainbow is there because it's used to, to let LGBTQIA um, kids and adults, um, everybody know like it's safe to be here, like a store will use it, a church will use it, a restaurant will use it, um, teachers will put it on their door. And uh, so if you're telling me where it's, there's places I need to be safe, that means that um, I could be in danger. And that's true. That's the truth of how things are. Um, and there's Moxie throwing up a, a, a black power fist. And so the alignment of these two is really important throughout the course of this book. Um, Moxie suggests that they make a podcast to tell their stories. Who is we? Us. We're going to tell our stories. Who is we? Us, the ones who are in this together. Who are we telling? Everyone who listens. Okay. So um, I, when I sat down to write this book, I asked the character in my imagination, what do you want me to know? You know, because I didn't have a childhood like this. And um, uh, my brother didn't have a childhood like this. So I wanted to create this liberated childhood and then ask the, the child who's in it, who's like from the future, 
um, what should I know? And it, it tells me what you don't know is there's lots of people I have to hide myself from, but my dad's not one of them, right? Look how he leaps into his arms and they play together and they give each other space. And he teaches him what his dad taught him. And I used um, black and white uh, images here to show that we're in the past, you know, it's the old days. And so that's his dad as a little boy and his dad saying, don't let anybody out there tell you who you are. And then his dad passes along this beautiful fathering by saying to him, his name is Demetrius. All you need to be is you, right? So there's several generations of really outstanding fathering. My father loves me completely and you bet I believe it. I mean, you bet I feel it. <laughs> um, and then uh, this transition, it was important to me to show the dad brings the child back to their mom's place and look, it's peaceful between them. It's affectionate, it's fond, it's, it's good. And uh, he snuggles up with his mom and he tells us about her. My mother fights for us, he says. And we see her, the black and white shows, shows that we're in the past again. And we see her, um, her childhood uh, in the suburbs where she's, our, she's cussing. The world is so bleeping unfair. Um, you know, a lot of kids. I wanted to show this kid who's like already, his mom when she was a kid was already tuned into injustice in the world and she was already mad about it. And so now he says she's got her own sense of justice and her own ideas about God. Um, and there she's cussing at her phone because she's reading the latest news about endangering trans kids' lives, you know? And, and often the people who are endangering queer, endangering queer and trans kids claim to be Christian and avow this Christianity, this version of Christianity, which is extremely violent and uh, inexcusable, inexcusable, what, no matter what your religion is, no matter who you worship or don't worship anything. Um, and so I really wanted to call that out in this book. And when his mom gets mad about people out here putting people in danger, the little hearts pop off of him excuse me, the little hearts pop off of him because he feels loved and seen because even though he's not trans, he's experiencing his affinity. That's my people. I'm with them and I need to know my mother's with them too. So that's why I made that choice. And um, we see their easy way of connecting with each other, you know, and she puts the phone away and she reads Octavia Butler instead. And she reads the words, God is change, shape God by Octavia E. Butler in the book, Parable of the Sower. And um, we learned this really important part of this book. And my brother helped me write this page. This is important. Um, even though what you don't know is even though I'm loved at home, the world's ugliness toward gay people lands right on me. They make laws against us, call us evil, try to convert us. And what about the ones that aren't loved at home? What about the kids whose only whose own families reject them. So here's a kid who's safe at home, but feels that resonance and that connection and that vibration of we are in this together. I am part of a we. And we need to stick together and we need to um, make it safer for kids like me and kids who, who don't even experience all the privilege I experience of my of my own people seeing me and just trusting me and loving me as I am. And now we see him in church. I'm just going to read a little bit more of this part. Uh, I mean, I'm going to read this whole part. I really want to share this part with you. This was from, this is really important to me because just in this last week, uh, the Pope called homosexuality a sin. He just like, decided it was important to say that. Like you can't bless unions between same-sex couples, same-gender couples, because uh, it's a, he can't bless a sin. I'm not even going to engage with that. Um, it's outrageous. Uh, but so let's, let, I wanted to show this, this mom here. Um, she's totally based on me, but she's, she's got kind of a, a sentimental attachment to church. She grew up going to church. 
she takes her child to church. And she's got her own ideas about God, right? So she's not there to oppress gay people. She's not there to oppress women, but she is in a place where they do that. That's what they do. That's what the Catholic Church does, um, among other things. So this kid is super uncomfortable. Look at them. Churches can preach all they want about love. The only thing I feel when I'm here is shame. But the shame isn't mine, and it's not coming from God. I have nothing to be ashamed of. My spirit floats free. And we see his little spirit float up. You know, like when you're bored in church and you can just dream, you can just vision. And they float up, the spirit floats up, and Luke, he looks up in the rafters of the church. And who pops in, floats in, but Jesus Christ himself. Jesus, yes, you're here, always and everywhere. Do you know what's happening down there? Yes. Does it hurt your feelings if I don't believe in you? It's my job to believe in you, and I do. So we're cool? Always. Hey, Jesus. Hey, what? Are there other gods besides you? Right, so if, if you find yourself face to face with Jesus Christ, whether or not you pray to him or not, it is a good time to ask your questions. And look how excited he is to get the answers. Both of them are excited. This is what the Pope should have said. Divinity is everywhere, in everyone, in everything. See how easy that is? The wolf the meditating bodhisattva, the black Mary, the ancient goddess with the crack down through her, the snake, the changing seasons, the trees, the cheetah, the water, the sacred. Are you going to punish the people of earth who hate me and blame it on you? He asks. And Jesus says, no, everyone is invited to love and be loved. How about him? And here arrives the spirit of Billy Porter in his tuxedo ball gown. And he sashays along that red carpet and he waves up at them. And especially him, says Jesus Christ. Love the dress, Billy. And Billy says, yours too, baby. Everyone on this page is wearing a dress. Even, um, that's Mitch McConnell. And the child wants to know if even Mitch McConnell is invited to love and be loved, considering all of the harm he is causing. Um, and Jesus Christ says, yes, even him. Love and be loved. Right? He's showing us what unconditional love really means. That's what Christianity is supposed to be about. Want to know what I love, Jesus? Always. I love that you and me are black. And now he's still kind of in that dreamy state of having just spoken with Jesus. And this woman steps up to his mom and says terrible things. And mom gets mad. And he says, what you don't know is homophobia scares the hell out of me. Maybe someday I'll understand the hurt that causes the fear, that causes the hate, that causes the violence and stupidity. He said, maybe. But love, I know all about. And now we see the mom tell the dad what happened after church. And he says, thanks for telling me. It's awful. She says, I'm sorry. He says, I am too. Are you really going to stop going to church just like that? He's on the last page. Demetrius is like, why do we still come here? And um, she's not going back. She says, I know how to find God. I don't need a building. So in this book, I wanted to show a parent who makes a mistake by bringing her child to a place where they're not safe. Their spirit isn't safe. And um, uh, then when she finally realizes that, uh, immediately she takes an action to protect the child's spirit and to not subject them to that harm anymore. And so I wanted to show that that decision can be made, you know, that people can change, that people can react in the moment in a way that is more spacious and more loving and more compassionate. Um, 
so that's uh, that's the story, and um, how it goes from there is that he and Moxie uh, get together at at his dad's place, and they record their podcast, and um, they share some language about how they want to be in the world, how they want to be treated, how they want to be respected, and um, how they want to be allowed to just you know, arrive to the world changing and stay changing. And for adults to um, step back and, and just behold them, let them be all that they are and all that they're not, you know, imagine that. So we see them really liberated in their imaginations and liberated in these spaces with adults who are willing to and brave enough to, and healed enough to accommodate the wholeness of them, of the children. Um, and that's happening at the dad's house, and his sister comes over, and um, he talks about sensitivity being valued as the super, the superpower it is. And uh, I think that's really important. And then they celebrate everything. They celebrate being themselves. They celebrate being gay and being black and being whatever race anybody is, whatever, um, but just being part of a community that loves you and sees you. And so if we had more time or if I was there, I could do a little workshop with you about how these characters get made and show you, like, this is the Moxie in the book, you know, on her skates with her little rainbow socks. And, um, this is uh, the security guard at the beginning of the story. She's a really good skater. And um, so I could show you how I make these, make these characters, but um, here's one of my most wonderful tools, it's this little stork scissors. These are brand new, actually. I haven't used these yet, but my other ones were breaking, so I got these. They're so pretty for making really teeny tiny cuts. And then what I wanted to show you is the parts of a little character, like if we were doing a workshop, right? Um, so there's a head, there's a little shape of body, there's some arms, there's some legs. Everything's, you know, the arms and legs are kind of curvy. And uh, then the other stuff is going to be clothes and hair. And let me show you how I do it. I put the head to the body, I put the arm behind, I put the little shirt on, Put the little on on the shirt so we can see that it's the way the body is turned. Put the skirt on the bottom. I put the legs like in a way that you can show, you can see that that, that person is moving. There's energy to it, you know. And then I put some little purple hair, and um, she's here. She's really nice. Uh, it's cool how the um, brown paper bag and certain kind of fabric just sticks to other fabric. This felt board, um, my, I love felt boards because it's the one thing I loved about um, Sunday school when I was a kid. They would tell us stories from the Bible using a felt board. So now I tell stories subverting the harmful teachings that are still being taught in Sunday schools, but not all Sunday schools, <laughs> not all. There's some really liberal, not liberal, uh, that word doesn't work anymore. There's some really wonderful people out there um, who are insisting on the unconditional love that is what um, we are here to offer each other, no matter who we pray to or how we pray or whether we meditate or what we believe or what we don't. Um, we're here to really care for each other and see each other and show up for, for ourselves the way the children do in this book and show up for each other. And um, uh, what do I want to say? Just that I hope that you get a chance to see this book at your bookstore at, at Green Bean or at uh, the library or maybe in your school or maybe in your Sunday school if they... Um, regardless of whether they're open to it, you could take it. If you go to Sunday school or you teach Sunday school, um, we could reclaim 
what love is for to share and show and be and uh, that's what the kids in this book model and um, that's what I want to be part of and that's the world that I want to imagine so thank you so much for listening and um, yeah have a great rest of your night or day <laughs>